Some 47 million Americans don't have health insurance, some of them by choice. Fixing that is a top priority of the Obama administration and fixing it so that people get good quality care across the board. But this question about health care sparks passionate debate, as we found out after I made this comment on Squawk on the Street yesterday. I just want to throw it out there, since we did it with housing and you're in a different environment. Is health care a right? Is health care a right? right? We would all like to say yes. Are there restrictions around that, parameters? I don't know. I'm just curious what people think. Well, we got a lot of email after that little exchange uh, between Mark Haynes and myself. Here's just a couple of examples. William, a retired firefighter who has cancer, wrote in, ever wonder why there are no for-profit fire departments? Because they burn down whole cities by denying service to people who couldn't pay. Medical treatment is a similar matter of public safety. This email, though, sums up the other side fairly well. Quote, if we have a right to something, then there is a concomitant responsibility attached in an intellectually honest society. I choose to smoke cigarettes. Should anyone be expected to pay for my lung transplant? I'm sorry that didn't get on the screen, but that perhaps summarized it the best. Let's talk about this with Michael Cannon, Director of Health Policy at the Cato Institute, and my FOM, Senior Policy Advisor for the National Physicians Alliance. Good to have both of you with us. Michael Cannon, you note that Michael Moore in his sicko movie said, America is the only country in the Western world that doesn't believe it's a human right to provide free universal health care coverage for every one of its citizens. Should health care be a right? Uh, yeah, well, you know, hey, I think it should be a right, and I think it should be free, and I think that therefore physicians should work for nothing. Uh, be, or how dare are they you charge being slightly me? Slightly sarcastic, how, yeah. How dare they charge me for medical care when I have a right to it? I mean, really, I don't have to pay in order to speak freely. I don't need to pay in order to exercise my right to religion. So. How dare a physician or a nurse charge me for medical care when I have a right to that? So you're saying if we go with it being a right, we end up in that situation where people expect things for free or perhaps take advantage of services. Uh, I think what happens is you end up in a situation where you don't have health care. If you treat health care with a right, you won't have any health care because there won't be anyone there to provide it. Mai, what is your view on that? Is that where we would end up if we treated it as a right that everyone's entitled to? Well, I think it's really not constructive to talk about in absolute terms. I think um, from an empiric perspective, uh, the country has decided that it is a right with the election of Obama. And in many ways, that was the easy part, um, the public's endorsement of that very high priority of his. I think the much more difficult part is what Michael's alluding to, is deciding uh, it's a right to what and how does one pay for it and how does one make sure that what we get for the money we invest is good enough value for society. What right, do you well, do maybe my, doctors okay, should ahead. not be able to charge for necessary care. Do, would you agree with me that doctors should not be able to charge for necessary services because we have a right to those services? That's really not my definition of a right. I mean, rights come well, with responsibilities. Well, but your definition of a right, your definition of a right in, me, is that well, we've decided it's a right because we've elected President Obama. No, if we elect I think someone that people have later, a conception. Then cease to I be think, a right. I think that, that the... If it's a right because of who we elected, then that right's going to disappear. Okay, Michael, let her answer. I think that the conception that health care, that there are certain necessities in health care that we as a society cannot imagine withholding. We do not let people die on the street bleeding in this country. Hospitals are required to treat patients who show up in their emergency rooms. There are limits to what we can afford to provide, but that doesn't really um, address the extreme version that Michael is presenting. It's really about getting down to hard work. This is not about shouting out slogans anymore or about um, campaigns on simplistic concepts. This is really about figuring out how does one structure a healthcare system to get better value out of it so that we can give as much of it as we can afford to people who need it. My, let's just be honest, I couldn't, though. I, I think couldn't we agree all know, more. just like in schools, in, in, in poorer areas in this country, oftentimes the health care is not equivalent to what you get in wealthier areas. It just isn't. That's right. And so then the question would be, uh, when you say right, does right mean no matter how much you make or how poor you are, you are entitled to the same sort of uh, a care? Let's just say you had a heart attack as someone who lives in Darien, Connecticut. Well, again, I think that that comes back to defining what the what is that you have a right to. And, you know, if you want to talk about disparities in health care, right there, I think it's a, a perfect prism for looking at the many ailments that can be fixed if we were committed to doing so. A lot of those disparities are not just a function of the socioeconomic status of the patient 
solutions, but of the way that we structure payment policies, of the way that we structure coverage policies, and how we do graduate medical education. I think there are definitely levers that can be pushed to really mitigate a lot of the things that we seem to think are intractable problems. <laughs> Michael, here's a, here's a question I have. If you say it's a right, then, then you're, you're right. You get to this issue of whether you charge for it. But if you don't charge for something, uh, then you might have overconsumption uh, of something that you don't necessarily need that consumption of, right? People might just go in and start getting new eyeglasses all the time because they're free. I mean, I know a company that provided that service, and these people would keep going and getting new sets of eyeglasses because they're free, so why not? If you make health care free to people, then they will not treat it like the precious resource that it is. So how do you and get around this problem? More. I couldn't agree more that we, we need to avoid simplistic slogans and actually get down to the real uh, hard part, which is how do we make health care better and more affordable. But saying that health care is a right, saying that health care is a fundamental human right, is one of those simplistic nonsense slogans because it completely avoids the real problem of how do you make health care better, cheaper, and safer so that we can save more lives. But what do you do and when we're in a position, like as we know we are, and, you, and you're both going to tell me the money is poorly spent. And, I, and I'm sure, obviously, you're right on that. Uh, but, but by 2019, this country will be bankrupt due to the health care promises it has made to Americans, whether that's prescription drug benefit or whatever it will be. So we can either say we're going to completely fix it, spend less money, and get better care, or we're going to have to acknowledge that somebody's going to get cut on something. And in Medicare, we've tried to make uh, health care a right for seniors. And look what's happened. We're wasting billions, hundreds of billions of dollars every year on useless medical care. Medicare is driving down the quality of care. It's making health care more expensive, not just for the taxpayers who have to fund the pro program, but for the rest of us well, you who know, have I to think, buy health care on our own. I think you just bundled in there hundreds upon thousands of programmatic and policy decisions that need not stay the way that they are. It is not a given that because there is an entire entitlement to certain health care benefits that you then have runaway costs. It's a matter of how you structure those benefits. It's a matter of what kind of cost sharing and how much cost sharing you ask of beneficiaries. It's a matter of how you structure payments to providers and, and the incentives that you put out. I would love for Medicare to work, uh, to operate differently than it actually does, but in the real world, this is how Medicare operates. This is what happens when you decide that we're going to try to treat health care as a right. Health care becomes more costly, the, qu the quality becomes worse, and it disappears. I would just point out that private health insurance uh, payers and insurers face the exact same problems that Medicare does with runaway costs. And there's and it's, direct and it's because payments we've from tried to make health care a right in the private sector, too. It we've is not to make actually a right sign for a sick people in the private sector by providing a tax break for employer sponsored insurance. We've tried it with price controls on health insurance. We've, we've, we've done all sorts of things to, to, to meddle with the market. Uh, not just for seniors, mm -hmm. but for people under age 65, and that's why health care is becoming more and more expensive. And I the think it's much more. I think it's much more constructive to talk about the path forward and how one fixes it, and how much health care is enough health care for whom. I think that it's much easier to say something is broken than to explain how one might fix it. I think we'll leave it on I, that note because I think everyone can agree with that statement, whether it's on health care or anything else. Thanks to both of you. We'll have you back and Thank we'll you. keep talking.